Uh, on that map, we have some folks here from down east, as we say. I was down east yesterday, and I'm having a hard time getting over it. I found it was a lot easier to get to Wilmington than it was to get from Wilmington. They were closing roads as I was going through them, and I couldn't get back on the same roads I came. I drove by a community called Chickapin. Anybody in here have even heard of Chickapin? <laughs> a few of you. But interspersed with that debris are people's belongings. Everything out of their house. It's their lives, their heritage, it's their history. It's the couch on which some kids have done their homework. It's the chairs that you eat your dinner in. And and those, some of those homes I saw were surrounded by tobacco fields and cotton fields that will, that are gone. Those folks that lived in those homes are depend, that was their annual income. It's gone. What are we gonna do about that? So it's very much on my mind and should be on the minds of us all. Because these are our kids. These are our people. There is no light switch. We're not going to fix it with a piece of legislation. We're not going to fix it with money. Really, we can certainly help, help a lot. Because we're going to have to fix broken hearts, and in some cases, broken heads. We've got a challenge ahead of us on, on education in particular. These kids are going to miss school days. In some cases, they're going to miss a lot of school days. And we've got not just teachers that are going to miss days, but we've got cafeteria workers and bus drivers that are going to miss. And they're going to miss paychecks because they were paid not from state coffers, they were paid on receipts. we got to do something about that, and I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do that. But I'm not going to let those people hang, leave those people hang. Now, a couple of years ago, we started a project in North Carolina called Advanced Teaching Rules. Some of your districts may be involved in it, some are not. But the, the concept behind Advanced Teaching Rules was to, to address two issues. Those two issues, how do we attract and retain high quality teachers in the classroom? Keep them there and, not, and allow them an opportunity to grow in their profession without the need to leave the classroom. That's a challenge nationwide, not just North Carolina. The second part is, how do we change the leadership dynamic in the schoolhouse? In many schoolhouses, we have a very simple management structure. Everybody reports to the principal. Makes no sense whatsoever. When I was in the military, when I ran my business, we discovered that on average, the, the best dynamic is somewhere between 9 and 13 people to report to one person, no more. And, no, and really, in some cases, yeah, some less. But that's, that's what we want to get to. The problem is that we've got uh, way too many people leaving the profession and way too few people entering the profession. Money's a big part of it, but it's not the only part of it. I have never in my life known a professional, that's you all, a professional. If you're really a professional, I've never known a professional that does not want to improve their skill. It's inherent in being a professional. And it's not just the money or the promotion, it's, some of, it's inside of us. We want to perform at the top of our profession. That's inherent in it. But we've allowed professional development to become nothing more than how to fill out another form or to tell you about the newest mandate that we're going to shove down your throat and not pay you for it, not provide you supplies for it, not provide you anything. But you got to do this. We've got to turn that corner and develop, establish, create, promote, and be involved in true professional development. True professional development. Come away saying, I really learned something. Most of us in, in education, we love a good lecture, we love a good book, we love, we, we, we love to see a kid grow, it just kind of, 
it, it zings us, man. I'm, I'm, that's important to me. So how do we get there? And that's why in the last budget year, we were able to, to settle on and to, to invite into our state schools that leave for that purpose, to get, improve our ability in the classroom with the kids and resulting in improved student outcomes, because that's what we're all about. That's, to me, I will tell you, I am not a public school guy, I'm not a charter school guy, I'm not a private school guy, I'm a kid guy. I'm someone that wants to see every kid in this state, regardless of color, zip code, anything, it doesn't matter to me. If you can help improve student outcomes, I'm your best friend, I'll go through fire for you. And if you're not helping student outcomes, then you're gonna have to go. Because I need people that are gonna improve student outcomes. We need people that are gonna improve student outcomes. And that's what you're embarking on today. You're pioneers. This is a new challenge for us. We're, this, we hope, we hope this is gonna turn the corner and stop with the, here's a new form to fill out and we want you to stand on your left foot, turn around three times and do a little dance in the jig. And by the way, then we're gonna tell you what bums you are. I spent a few years, I'm not an educator, obviously my vocabulary is not that good, I wish it was better, I work hard at it. I'm not even educated. But I'm in a spot, by luck or divine providence, to help. Sometimes the best help I can offer you is get out of your way. Oft times the best help I can offer you is get out of your way. But it's also to help develop a pathway that makes good, practical, reasonable sense. I don't have any answers. I'm looking to you all for answers, for direction. And yes, I'm looking for you to smack me up alongside the head from time to time, because I need it. I am a human being, and therefore I screw up. I think it's part of the definition. So help me. I'm begging you. I need your help, your advice, and yes, I need you to smack me up to the side of the head. I need you to tell me in no uncertain terms when I get off, off, the, off the highway, <coughs> off the road, whatever the right term is, off track, I, maybe that's the term. I need that help, but you, and you are going to be particularly positioned to do that. We don't need to throw rocks at each other. We don't have to throw each other under the bus. We need to talk to each other, not at each other. We need to learn how to disagree. There is an art to disagreement, like there is an art to communication. Part of the art of disagreement is understanding. In fact, is it's a huge part. I, if I don't understand your challenges and your concerns, then how can I disagree with you? because I don't know what I'm disagreeing about. But we have a toxic atmosphere this day, these days that's not helping at all. So that's why we're here today together. Um, I'm gonna have to get on out of here where I'm still trying to figure out how, what we're gonna do. We're coming back to session next Tuesday. Oh my. Fear for your lives when the General Assembly's in session. <laughs> But we're going to try and focus and hopefully come up. This is a three-part process. We're going to have we're going to come into session on Tuesday to do something of an immediate nature. Part of that is to relieve some of the concern and pressure that are on some families and people, to whether they be teachers or cafeteria workers or students. We've got families that have lost everything. We've got students that will not be back to school in our community college and our university system. They 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 can't. We got students that are losing instructional days, and we can't afford that either. I, I, I'm not smart enough. I'm hoping that between here and the and the legislative building on my drive back, that a, a little lightning will come up on me, and I'll have oh, here's what we're going to do. So, and then we've got the interim part, and then we've got the long-term part because we got buildings that'll that we can't put students back in those buildings or we can't put human beings back in those buildings. So I don't know how we're going to do it, 
I don't even know what we're going to do yet, but I'm part of our job, our, our, all of us, our job to figure it out. Which means we'll screw some things up. But okay. I'm an old sales guy. I used to, it didn't take me long to figure out that I had to make 17 calls to get a yes. 17 calls. Took 17 sales calls to get a yes. So bring on the no's because it moves me closer to yes. Rather than get you down, no, bring them on. Hurry it up, because the faster I get through those 16, I get to number 17, and oh, man! So, thank you very much, very much. Keep our lines of communication open. I need to hear from you. I need to know what's on your mind. I need to know what ideas you have. Because we can do this. We've done it before. And we're, and we're going to face these things again as well. I mean, life is. Life is. So let's get through those 16 so we get there to number 17. Thank you all very much. Appreciate what you're doing.